First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Okay, uh, Dan Khalil is Chief Commercial Officer and CEO of Great Castle Security. Um, uh, they're out at, uh, at Griffiths. And, of course, this cyber attack a- has created a huge ripple effect. Um, state of emergencies in uh, several states, especially in the, in the Northeast, including North Carolina, where there is a huge gas shortage. Look what this has caused. Uh, Dan, good morning. Thanks for coming on. Hey, good morning, Bill. So what do you uh, what do you make of this? I mean, there's a little part, I think, of all of us that's, that's thinking, I, I thought we were, as a nation, something as secure as uh, our, uh, our oil lines and the oil industry. Well, you know, I, I, I think we're, this worries people, I think. Well, it should, but, uh, you know, keep in mind that cybersecurity is, and cyber threats always evolve, so it right. isn't just uh, where you get to a certain point in time and the threats no longer exist, so as we build active defenses and better mechanisms to uh, identify these, um, you know, um, types of ransomware and, and malware and other threats, uh, you know, the adversaries will then build the next generation, right, so it's right. the cat and mouse game forever. I, I just wanted to ask, uh, the fact that we were able to go back online, and I don't think we paid, uh, what does that tell you? Uh, how big is that? Is that a, Obviously, that's a positive, wouldn't it be? You know, I'm not entirely sure whether or not uh, Colonial paid. Uh, the news reports suggest that they didn't, and it's my understanding that they are in the process of getting back online. But the important distinction, particularly with the Colonial Pipeline uh, attack, is that the Adversaries didn't attack the gas um, portion, if you will, the, the computer systems associated with the gas. They attacked the business systems uh, purely with the intention of uh, locking the employees in the organization out of their data unless they were willing to pay the ransom. Mm. So they didn't try to, to, to impact the gas supply. There's a big distinction there. So I, I was that was going to be my question to explain exactly what it is they hacked into. I didn't know if they were re-diverting where the oil was going to or just turned off a switch so it wouldn't flow. So I guess maybe maybe this isn't your expertise and it isn't if it's if you're cybersecurity, but so why is there a gas shortage then? If there wasn't an issue with the gas flowing, why do we have a gas shortage? Well that gas wasn't their intention, now? uh right? That but there was an issue with it shut down the pipeline. Yeah, so I, I, I think they had to shut systems down and any time you even if you shut your business systems down, you're going to impact some availability or uh, ability, I should say, to to deliver your product, in this instance, gas. Um, personal opinion, I think the shortage is in some part associated with the fear and panic, just like with toilet paper. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're watching everybody run out and buy buy gas and put it in anything they possibly can, yep. including storage bins, I think I saw yesterday. So. I got to believe some of the shortage is associated with with the, um, the the public's panic over the situation. Yeah, storage bins. I mean, that's going to evaporate. Stupid. Well, I mean, what are they? they well, so they're 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 <laughs> you're you're using. I've seen I've seen gasoline stored in like a milk jug and stuff. And that's and how do you get it in? Your, I mean, you're going to get a lot of spillage. You're going to get any in your tank from a storage bin. Hey, listen, I'm pretty sure you know one of those guys that's doing a Gary Heenan. He, I saw you in the store. So. <laughs> I saw him on TV last night. You could tell. You could tell he spent the whole day hoarding gas. Uh, you could, just could tell. Oh, he did. Uh, we could smell him in the odd. I yeah, think we could. Yeah. Uh, yeah, tell me about it. That's very funny. Um, uh, but the reality is people people are, are panicking. We're seeing it even happen here. Yeah. Um, long lines at gas stations, even around here yesterday. Sure. And, you know, to, to get back to the, the type of attack, it's called ransomware. Um, again, they're just looking to exploit, you know, the, the organization and try to, to get, you know, to get money from them. Yeah. And now the scarier part with this is not only are they locking you out of your data and demanding a ransom, they're threatening to release your data to the public if you mm. don't pay yep. additionally. So, um, the other thing, Bill, with this, with this particular ransomware in this organization called DarkSide, they're trying to legitimize themselves and, and by actually saying, hey, we're not going to attack hospitals and school systems, and um, we actually have rules of engagement or we have an acceptable use policy, and we're even going to make a donation to charities. 
So when you start to tie mm. uh, rules and um, the notion of you're doing something good, uh, it makes it more attractive and makes it that much more dangerous because you have that many more uh, people and organizations looking to get involved with this type of activity. It's almost like we're uh, we're dealing with a little Robin Hood story here. That's what yeah, I was you're, thinking. You're, <laughs> yeah, you're stealing from the rich to uh, to give to the poor and those in, in need. Wow. Well, um, okay, sure. the fact that they went after the business, you said that that is significant. <laughs> Um, and, and I, I, I do think that's, that's interesting. So this was not as much of a, this was not an attack on America per se. And, and that's the distinction between the, the two possibilities here, right? Sure. I mean, as patriots, we all say it's an attack on America. Understood. It's yeah. an asset that impacts our way of life, impacts, right? But in this instance, it was uh, an attack on a for-profit business, so, um, yeah. claiming for, solely for the purposes of financial extortion meant to cause no harm to humans. Uh, but it is something that we for years have, have you know, feared and known that, uh, you know, entities associated with our critical infrastructure could be uh, not only uh, yeah. likely targets, but in some instances easy targets if, they're, if, they're aging, if they have aging infrastructure. So an easier way for me to, to say this is this was not a terrorist attack. Um, that is the, uh, the the difference to more extortion than a, a terrorist attack. However, doesn't it make you think, though, um, uh, Dan, that at any point, what if an attack like this was done as a terrorist attack? And what if they meant to shut down systems? What if they went after banks and they went after the, the, the electric grid and et cetera? And it was done as a coordinated attack all at once. Uh, are, are we yep. vulnerable? Seems like we are. Are we vulnerable? Sure, uh, and, and it's not. It's not a. Uh, it's not a critical assessment when I say we're vulnerable on our on our infrastructure, as you described. It's just a reality of of that. You know, our our infrastructure is enormous and requires yeah. consistent maintenance and expertise to try to protect and, and identify and defend against these things. So yes, it's something. What you what you described is is a fear, the uh, longstanding fear, and something that. Uh, Everyday uh, organizations like AIS up in Rome, that's the other organ- the, the group yeah, that I'm yeah. with, uh, uh, work to help to protect. <laughs> uh, a lot of work going out at uh, a lot of important work happening at Griffiths. Yes. That's all you're going to say. It relates that's all, that's, to, uh, to what yeah. we're talking about today. Uh, it relates to overtime. <laughs> There's not a lot you can say. I get that. I thought he was going silent on me. Yep. We don't talk about that. Sorry. Uh, Mitch, <laughs> Mitch is uh, w- with a question. Quickly, Mitch, I'm almost out of time. Okay, uh, yeah, um, the topic is very good, and I know that the Albany Times Union had a big article about how all the computer systems and the telephone service and so forth at RPI, the Good Engineering School in Troy, have been shut down, and I'm sure it's ransomware. I'm sure they're asking for a ransom. And now, with a lot of online teaching going on, the students can't even do that, so they've had to postpone some of their final exams, uh, and they still are uh, hostage to them. So apparently these people are very smart. They pick uh, institutions that are vulnerable, and they go after them. And they picked Kent Potsdam Hospital uh, last year, and they also picked the uh, Village of Illinois a year or so right. ago. And is there a in question cases, in here anywhere? The money they're looking for. Okay, is there a question that you have? Yeah, the question is, uh, are, are our systems and all these institutions that vulnerable that they can go around and pick on these little guys? All right, I'm definitely hanging up on you now. Do um, you want to answer that, <laughs> uh, the question that uh, I asked I 10 minutes ago? Maybe I, yeah, maybe I can expand on it uh, just a little bit. The size of the business obviously plays a role, um, particularly based on how much perceived revenue they have or how much money they have in terms of their ability to play. Right. To pay. Um, but it doesn't necessarily just, uh, I mean, there is select targeting, but there's, you know, you shouldn't fear because you're, you shouldn't not worry because you're a small business that, that, uh, you're not prone to such attacks. Okay. Uh, can, can, um, can, they've can, made, they've, they've made, yeah. Can busy, I, I, I'm up against the clock now all of a sudden. Thank you, Mitch. Um, can, can the average business reach out to you guys? Uh, do you help companies? Uh, and if so, how do they reach yeah. out? Yeah, so uh, not a plug, just clarifying. I uh, We have two businesses, AIS, which yep. is located in Rome, um, primarily does work for the U.S. government, and then Gray Castle Security, which I'm the CEO of over there. That is our commercial business that does work 
in supports commercial business. So they can certainly reach out to Gray Castle Security All right. if they want to uh, have a discussion on how we can help. Dan, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Stay uh, safe and Thank secure. You. Have a great day. you do the same. Stay safe and secure out there.